Okay. If you've got any questions, I'm going to continue on with one more section. We're going to take a look at what uh, a reference angle is and how we can use reference angles to come up with uh, the trig uh, relationships of practically any angle that's out there. Um, I'm going to first define for you what a reference angle is, and then that'll lead into uh, how we use reference angles to come up with uh, the trig relationships for, uh, for other angles. Number one, I want to point out the reference angle is always, always, always an angle formed by using the x-axis, okay? You never, ever, ever use the y-axis when you want to draw or when you want to uh, uh, refer to a, uh, to a reference angle. So you simply take the terminal side of the angle. And uh, notice that out of the three examples that we see here, notice we don't have a quadrant one example. Well, why is that? Well, that's because if I'd say, guys, let's come up with a quadrant one angle. So I'll just draw a ray here in quadrant one, like such. And I would say, well, where is the reference angle? Let me define for you again what a reference angle is. It's the angle formed between the x-axis and the terminal side. Well, folks, with a quadrant one angle, the reference angle is the angle itself, OK? versus a quadrant two, three, or four example now. Looking at my quadrant two angle, here's my terminal side out to the left. Where is the angle formed uh, between the x-axis and the terminal side? And they have it listed there in with, uh, with red. You can see there's a difference between the angle itself in blue and the reference angle in red. With me? Whereas in quadrant one, right, those two angles end up being the same angle, so there's no need to talk about. It. Look at a quadrant three angle. The, uh, the, the angle itself is in blue, so there I have a terminal side in quadrant three, and reference angles are always formed in relationship with the x-axis, so that little angle right here between the x-axis and that ray uh, would be the, what we call the reference angle. So some notation that this textbook uses, if theta is the angle, then they say theta prime is the reference angle. It's just some notation that they use. And you're about to, to hear or learn a, a big, big, big relationship between the angle itself, theta, and the, uh, the reference angle, theta prime. Finally, over here, quadrant four, same thing. In blue, you have the actual angle in standard position. But however, if we were to find the angle between the x-axis and the uh, terminal side, there sits my, my reference angle. Always, always constructed in terms of the x-axis. Be OK on what, what, what they look like or where they are, because we're about to learn the relationship between the two. Before we learn the relationship, which we'll do with the bottom question, when it says find the values of the trig functions for uh, 210 degrees, and now we're not just going to run to our calculator and say, calculator, what's the sine, cosine, and tangent of 210? We're going to come up with exact values. You'd ask your calculator that. It's going to come up with decimal approximations. We have methods of coming up with, with more exact values. We're, we'll address that here in a second. First off, part A and part B, I'm giving you some angle. You need to determine what would the reference angle be in terms of how many degrees would the reference angle be. So let's start with where exactly is a 218 degree angle. Well, what quadrant would you be in? Three. Quadrant three, right? So let's think of a quadrant three angle. And the whole way around here, is 218 degrees, which means what? I've gone 180 plus some little, little bit more. And that little bit more ends up being the reference angle. So take uh, 218, subtract off 180. How much is that little angle? 38. 38. So our reference angle, this guy right here, this reference angle, theta prime, is 38 degrees. Good. 
Look at B, 1,387 degrees. We gotta first get an idea of what quadrant that we're in. And how do I go about figuring that out? What I like to do is I'll take, especially very, very, very large numbers like 1,387. I'll take 1,387 and I'll divide that by 360. Why am I doing that? Because it says here now it's approximately 3.8 times around the, uh, the XY grid. So it's going to probably put me in which quadrant? 3.8, quadrant 4. So here I am in quadrant 4. I'm going to draw a ray. And now I've got to actually come up with the number of, uh, the number of degrees that that reference angle is. So if I did go four complete times around, 4 times 360 is 1440. So I'm going to subtract off, right, the amount that I was given, 1387, because that's how much I'm, in a sense, backing up by. So subtract off 1387, and we get a reference angle of 53 degrees. So this right here would be 53 degrees. Now with that process, let's say you did some subtraction there, and let's say that you got a reference angle of 92 degrees. Well then that means you guessed your quadrant wrong, right? 92 degrees is putting you over here somewhere, so you made a, a small error there in terms of which, which quadrant that you're in. Okay, questions with locating the, uh, the reference angle and determining how many degrees that it is? Any questions out there? Now we get to the good part. What, what's the use of figuring out or finding out these, these reference angles? So, here we're asked, come up with the six trig values for 210 degrees. Well, let's you and I figure out where that's at. Two hundred ten degrees is in quadrant three. So here's two ten. What would the reference angle be? Thirty. Thirty degree reference angle. And folks, here is the relationship between an angle and its reference angle. Other than the signs, meaning positive and negative, the absolute values of sine, cosine, tangent, and the reciprocals are identical. Are identical. What I'm saying is this. The sine of 210 degrees, in terms of absolute value, is the same thing as the sine of 30. They're going to have the same value. Their signs might be different. One's positive, one's negative, one's, they're both positive, they're both negative. But you and I have a quick way of determining signs, right? We know that all that, that, that uh, all students take calculus acronym that I told you. We know that all the trig functions are positive here. Sine is positive here. Cosine is positive here. And tangent, oops, TC. Tangent's positive in quadrant three and cosine is, is positive in, tan, in uh, quadrant 4. So 210 degrees, if I would want the sine of 210, we know that it's the same thing as the sine of 30 in terms of their absolute values. We don't know about their signs yet. And do we know what the sine of 30 is right off the bat? Anybody know what the sine of 30 degrees is? Did we go over those yet? No. One half. Sine of 30 degrees is one half. So what's my final answer? Well, since my angle is in which quadrant? 210 is in quadrant 3. Is sine positive or negative in quadrant 3? Positive. It's negative. So my final answer would be negative one-half. The sine of 210 is negative one-half, okay? Um, let me um, double check one thing. Yeah, 
that's coming up later. Okay. I don't want to get in. If, if you're, some of you are saying, well, how in the world did you know that the sine of 30 was uh, negative one half, or in, in, in terms of sine of 30 being positive one half? There are some shortcuts you're going to learn in a future class. Uh, really, the only one that the textbook w wants you to be aware of right now is going back to your uh, 30, 60, 90 uh, relationship. And I told you with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we always know in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we always know, right, that the hypotenuse is always double the side across from the 30. And you also know that, uh, let's call that angle A for a minute, we know that the sine of that angle is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So in this case, opposite over hypotenuse would always be, or is in this case, 1 over 2. But since, it, since it's always true with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, let's say that this is 5, well, what's this going to be? 10. If one's 7, the other's 14. So you're always going to have, with a 30 degree angle, you're always going to have that opposite over hypotenuse relationship of 1 half. So there is why the sine of 30 is equal to 1 half. That's really all you need to know at this point. Okay? How about the uh, sine of 60? How about the sine of 60? Sine of 60, if I go opposite over hypotenuse again, that's going to be root 3 over 2. And that was, that's always the case. Sine of 60 will be root 3 over 2. Sine of 45, what do you think there? Sine of 45. Can't leave it like that. Sine of 45 degrees, you're exactly right. Opposite, hypotenuse, rationalize the denominator, root 2 over 2. So that's where, if you look at some of your examples, that's where they're getting the 1 half from, the root 3 over 2s, the root 2 over 2s, okay? Uh, in an upcoming section, however, I promise you, I, do you know those, uh, those ways we, we learned how to memorize the quadranto angles? Sine goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1. Cosine goes 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And then if I need tangent, I can do a quick division. We, we can come up with a chart that helps us organize 30, 45, and 60 degree angles pretty quick. I'm just going to show you right now because the suspense is killing me. Well, I want you to think of it this way. We have sine, cosine, tangent, and then we have 30, 60, 30, 45, 60. And you just found out, right, that the sine of 30 is always 1 half. The cosine of 30, uh, let's not do cosine column yet, I'm sorry, the sine, stay with the sine column. We, had, we, we found out that the sine of 45 was the square root of 2 over 2. And we found out that the sine of 60 was the square root of 3 over 2. Did I lose anybody there where those three are coming from, from your special right triangles, right? Now, use your co-function rule. We know that the sine of 30 is the same thing as the cosine of 60, right? So we just invert this whole column. Square root of 2 over 2 stays where it's at. Right? The sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. Well, 30 and 60 are uh, complements of one another. 45 and 45 are complements of one another. So that's why those values don't change from sine to cosine. The sine of 45 is equal to the cosine of 90 minus 45, which is 45. Right? And then how am I going to get my tangent column? How do I get tangent if I know sine and cosine? No. Sine, over cosine. sine divided by. I'm going to simply divide these two. So 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, think multiplication and reciprocal, will get 1 over the square root of 3, which is root 3 over 3. Uh, on the 45 row, sine divided by cosine, we'll the same thing, so there I'm going to get a 1. And root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So that's just root 3. 
Something else that's kind of funny too, if you think of it this way, um, look at again, look at the sine column. If you put them in order, sine, cosine, tangent, 30, 45, 60, you can actually reference this one as being the square root of one over two, square root of two over two, square root of three over two, right? Square root of one over two is still one half, but it's just ways of, of organizing or memorizing these situations. I only ever memorize those and I know all I do here is invert the column, and then to get this column, I do what? I divide. All right, I'm just I'm trying to give you some techniques to help you to memorize these pretty, pretty quick. Okay? Make a little bit of sense right now? But that's only working with number one, two, three. Uh, 30, 45, and 60. Yeah, you're, these are the special angles. But I'm telling you, yeah, the bigger number. No, no, no. The values are going to be the same. If, if you end up with reference angles that are one of these, yeah. the values are going to be the same. We might have to change the sign of it from being positive or negative, though, however, depending upon what quadrant that we're in. Right. All right, where did I leave off? Try these two. It says find the exact value of each expression. Now notice with A, I, I included the picture to help you come up with the reference angle. B, we're going to have to come up with our own picture to try to determine what the reference angle is. Also, I, I can't remember if I called this out or not, but if you are given a negative angle measure, that's measured in going clockwise. Do you see how this problem is referencing a negative 240 degree angle? Well, negative 240 degrees is the same thing as going positive, going counterclockwise, uh, 360 minus that. So by, by graphing this negative 240 degree angle, we see that our, our terminal side ends up with in quadrant two. And if we subtract that from 180, actually in this case, uh, we're gonna go what? 240 minus 180, we see that this reference angle ends up being a 60 degree reference angle. Okay? Now we know in terms of absolute value wise, the cosine of negative 240 is the same as uh, the cosine of its 60 degree reference angle. And using our, our new cheat sheet chart that I gave you, we know that the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to what? Root 3 over 2. Cosine is 60, root 3 over 2. Be now let's get the right sign. See, this is a correct statement right here. Cosine 60, root 3 over 2. Now, what, what quadrant am I in? Two. Quadrant 2. Is cosine positive or negative? negative? It's negative, so therefore, the cosine of negative 240 degrees would be negative root 3 over 2. We use the reference angle to get the value, and then we use what quadrant am I in to get the whether it's positive or negative. I thought sine 60 was root 3 over 2. Yeah, I may, that's what I was going to double check. Cosine of 60. Oh, you're right. It would, yep. be, it would be one half. Yeah. There you go. These are one half. My apologies. Negative. Negative one half. All right. Cosine sixty is the same as sine of thirty, using your comp your cofunction rule. Uh, letter B. Tangent is six hundred and seventy-five degrees. Now let's actually construct a, a drawing or a picture here to see what quadrant that we're going to be in. So if I take two, uh, 675 and I actually subtract off 360, because we know it's not two times around, or is it two times around? No. Um, yeah, if we take 675 and subtract off 360 degrees, we're looking at a 315 degree angle, which puts us where? 
quadrant four. So imagine this ray in quadrant four. Here we are, 315 degrees. So therefore the reference angle is how much? 45? Yes, 45 degrees. So since our problem is asking us for the tangent of 675, we know that it's the same thing absolute value wise as the tangent of 45. So let's figure that out first. What's the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. So therefore, the tangent of 675 is equal to 1 in terms of absolute value, but is it positive 1 or negative 1? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. All students take calculus, so only cosine is positive in quadrant four. So you would say that the tangent of 675 degrees is negative one. Making more sense? Okay. Now you'll get questions like evaluate the following. Uh, what does all of this become using your, um, your new special uh, relationships that we just had? So we have cosine of 120 plus 2 times sine squared 60 minus tangent squared of 30. Let's try to substitute in what we know about these values to come up with what this overall expression turns into. Um, if you can do these in your head, fine. If not, jot down some, some extra steps in the meantime. But can you picture in your mind right now where a 120 degree angle would be? And if you can picture that in your mind, what's the reference angle going to be? 60, right? If you've got a 120 going on here, and the whole way down to the, the x-axis again is 180, then we're, we got to fill in the gap with a 60 degree reference angle, okay? So what's the cosine of 60? One half, and we're in quadrant two, so that's a negative one half. So this term right here is simply negative one half. Let's do the next term. What is the sine of 60? Sine of 60 is root 3 over 2, and we're going to end up squaring that one. Two times that, by the way. And what's the tangent of 30? Root 2 over 2? Nope. You're thinking uh, sine and cosine of 45, I think. Tangent of 30. Root 3 over 3. Root 3 over 3 and we're going to end up squaring that. I don't expect you to, at this point, if this is new to you, to know those relationships that, that fast. But again, you're going to be using these things throughout the whole course and after a week or so, you'll, you know, sine and cosine of 45, you'll, you'll know root 2 over 2 pretty quick. Let's simplify this mess. We have a negative 1 half. We are then going to take 2 times this fraction squared, so we're going to square the, the square root of 3 and get 3, and we're going to square the 2 and get 4. Likewise, with our final fraction, we're going to square the square root of 3 and get 3, square the denominator and get 9, and then it's just a matter of combining these fractions together. Uh, the middle one, by the way, 2 times 3 fourths ends up being 6 fourths. Okay, and when we combine all these terms together, uh, what do we get? Uh, 6 fourths minus 1 half, that would be 2 fourths, so 6 fourths minus 2 fourths is 4 fourths, or 1. So this becomes 1. And 1 minus 3 ninths, well 1 is 9 ninths, and 9 ninths minus 3 ninths is 6 ninths, and 6 ninths becomes 2 thirds. So that whole expression becomes two thirds. Did I do my arithmetic right? No, no. Either you did or I did it. <laughs> One of these.
Directions say evaluate each function by first expressing, expressing the function in terms of an angle between 0 and 360, which we've been doing that already. We've got to first come up with 780 is the same as what other angle out there. So we picture going around this until we get to 780 degrees, so how many times around am I going to go? Two full complete times around, which gives us how many degrees? 720. 720. What quadrants that put us in? One. Quadrant 1. So here I am. Actually, what happened there, right, was here we go. 360, 780. That's what happened, right? And I look at that angle and say, hey, that angle has a, since it's 780, this angle has a how many degree reference angle? 60. 60 degree reference angle. So the cosine of 780 is the same thing <coughs> as the cosine of my reference angle 60. Since I'm dealing with quadrant 1, I don't got to worry about any signs because everything's positive in quadrant 1. And what's the cosine of 60? One half. There's the answer there. Letter B. Now we're going to go 405 degrees in the other direction, opposite direction, clockwise. So imagine us starting again at the x-axis. And we're going to take off this way, 360. How much more do I need to get 405? 45 more? Stop right here. So it looks like we end up with a quadrant 4 angle, right? And it also looks like our reference angle ends up being 45 degrees. We're in quadrant 4. We're dealing with tangent. So tangent is negative in quadrant 4. And what's the tangent of 45? 1. one. So overall answer? Negative 1. Negative one. Okay. See, already you've used it enough times, you're starting to memorize a couple of these relationships already. Finally, find me all values of theta in the range of 0 to 360, meaning we're not going to sit here and go around an infinite number of times today. Stop at 360. Find me all the angles such that those angles have a cosine of negative root 2 over 2. Well, let's first identify which quadrants are we working with. Where is the cosine negative? 2 and 3. 2 and 3. Good. 2 and 3. What reference angle? What reference angle has a cosine of root 2 over 2? 45. 45 degree reference angle. So I'm kind of working in reverse now, right? I'm working in reverse. I have the, I have the cosine of this angle. But working in reverse, cosine root 2 over 2 means I got to have reference angles of 45 degrees. I know that I'm in quadrant 2 or also 3 because the cosine is negative, and those are the two quadrants where cosine is negative. So what two angles am I, am I working with here? Well, let's, let's construct a 45 degree reference angle here, and let's construct a 45 reference angle here. Now to identify my two angles, how much would this be? 180 minus 45, 135. How do I get the other one? Well, which will be this angle, start here to here, will be 180 plus 45, which is 215. Is it 215? 225? 225. 225. So there are the two values. That, that answer this question. And I, I don't want to keep, they, the directions could say, you know, go two times around or go three times around where you just have to, you know, keep on attacking on additional multiples of 360, but you don't got to worry about this one because they only want us to go from zero to 360. So here are the 
the two correct answers. What about in quadrant four? Can that be the negative two? No, in quadrant four, cosine is positive. There's only two and three. Because we're, we're specifically told that cosine has got to be negative, which puts us in quadrants two and three. Right. Okay.